Well, if it's not one thing, it's another. Yeah, that tire's trash. I need to put these tires on, but I'm feeling like a bicycle. And the way it works is this is an electromagnet. Tried looking, so this is a nice app that's free. Hey there, welcome back to Farmcraft. I'm John, and today we're working on a trailer that has several problems. Yes, it's just a trailer, but this turns out to be a lot more interesting than you might think. We're just coming out here to load the excavator on here. And I see that. Okay, flat tire. Maybe it's a slow leak. Oh, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, that tire's trash. No, it's an old tire. That's all right. Wait a second. That one's trash, too. The heck? Two tires at once. Last time I used this trailer, it was fine. What the hell? Can you guys see that? Three tires. And it's like the, uh, the glue's just letting loose. Stuff's delaminating. I don't see anything on that tire, but I mean, if I'm going to have to replace three, I might as well replace four. That's just crazy. I don't think I've ever had two tires go at once on something like that. It's not like I ran over anything. Now it's possible, well, I mean, that's on the other side. I was going to say it's possible one of them let loose and then beat the other one to death. Now, what I can tell you is this trailer, uh, the brakes haven't been working for a little while. So I've been meaning to get to it and fix that anyway. Since we're going to be pulling all these tires off, I think it would be a good time to work on the brakes. Still holding air, not for long. Man. Yeah, it was not coming apart yet, but give it time. like this could be cleaned up a little bit so that they move easier but I think my issue is electrical but I wanted to get in here and get a look at them and uh, repack the bearings anyway because it hasn't been done in a long time hold your breath so in order to replace all the bearings there's a bearing right there I'd have to take that seal out I don't see any numbers on that seal 
and I don't really want to get into the uh, the parts game with this. You know, if I'm ever going to take that seal out, I'm just going to replace the bearing. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'll uh, I'll pump a little grease down in there, do a decent job of cleaning up and repacking these front bearings, but I think that's good enough. This thing doesn't get a lot of miles. For the most part, I move my excavator around, I move my tractor here and there, I'll pick up some logs and uh, move them to the sawmill on this, but yeah. This thing could go a long time and not see a thousand miles. Now right here is the adjustment. That little scroll wheel there that you can turn, basically just turns that turnbuckle and pushes the brakes out, which you access through this. And I need to adjust them, but you have to have the hub on to do that. And uh, so basically once I start putting it back together and get the hub back together, I'll adjust these. And you, you adjust them so that the brakes are just not touching so obviously any, any additional force on the brakes applies them. And the way it works is this is an electromagnet. You're sending power to this, makes this magnetic. The hub is, is right beside it spinning. And so it sticks to the hub. And depending on which way the wheels are spinning, it pushes it either this way, which you can see pushes that shoe out, or this way, and, uh, and applies the brakes. So I'm just gonna uh, use some lithium grease and grease up my moving parts in here and I think that all looks fine. I do want to check the magnet, make sure the uh, ohms in the magnet are good. Obviously if, you, if you've if you got uh, no continuity through your magnet then that's not going to work. But probably I just have a, a broken wire somewhere in the system that's preventing it. Or a bad connection. I could even have a bad connection up where it plugs into the truck. So we'll do the electrical troubleshooting in a bit here. Stuff's pretty useful for things like this. So farm work can't all be trailers and bulldozers and excavators. Sometimes there's more mundane tasks that need to be done. And the sponsor of today's video is going to help me do one of those tasks in just a minute here. Now, you know me, I'm not just going to endorse this product because they say it's good. I want to do some testing. I'm talking about Optivolt. Optivolt has developed panels that can actually tolerate partial shade and continue to put out a reasonable amount of power. This is really groundbreaking for portable power systems like on an RV. You're going to be in a campground that's partially shaded. You're going to be able to continue to generate power while regular solar panels wouldn't. They've developed a new solar panel technology that really has the potential to be rather groundbreaking. Uh, it's a solar panel that performs well in partial shade. So let's go test these things out and see what these Optivolt panels can do. All right, so here I have an Optivolt panel that's a 100 watt panel. And here I have a portable panel that's 200 watts. You can see it's double the size. I am now on the 200 watt panel and I'm getting 105 watts. It's not pointed directly at the sun. So that's reasonable. Now let me cover up half of it and let's see what we drop to. Wow, that dropped to nothing. Really? I would think it would be putting out something. That's worse than I thought. Okay. Let's try the OptiVolt. All right, so now we're on that panel, which is actually a little less than half the size, and it's a 100 watt panel, not pointed directly at the sun. So don't expect it to be anywhere near 100 watts. What do we get? 51, okay, that's pretty reasonable given how I've got it set up. Let's cover it up and see what it does. There's half of it covered up. Ooh, 23. So obviously it's still a solar panel, it's not going to like shade, but with half of it covered up, it's still making half the power. That's a pretty impressive difference, and I also did some real world testing using a limb to shade the panels and found similar results. So I don't think there's any doubt that the OptiVolt is tolerating the shade quite a bit better, and, and not just by like 5 or 10 percent, by like 25 or even more percent. So I've mounted the panels to my little cart here and I've got it charging a power pack so that we can go out and get some work done. And I can keep generating power wherever I am on the farm, even if I'm in partial shade. So this is what I'm working on. This is one of our cattle waterers. We have seven of these. 
And when we installed them, we put a little concrete slab around them, and obviously that's just fine. Uh, around that, we put down some uh, weed fabric, and then we put stone. And the stone just disappears. I don't know where it goes. It's gone. And then you end up with a big mess. You can see I've put some bricks down to try to uh, prevent the erosion, but the cattle end up stomping in the mud, and it just turns, you know, it used to be level with the, with the slab there, and it all just goes away. Uh, I put some pretty good brick over here, so that's holding up okay, but uh, anyway, what I want to do is put some concrete. The problem is my mixer is electric, so I have to power it somehow. I can generate power and power it with my power pack over there. Not going to make anything pretty, just going to put some concrete here, something that'll stick around a little longer. If you guys have ever tried mixing a large amount of concrete by hand, you know what a benefit it is to have a mixer like this. Solar powered concrete mixer does me just fine. I think it's going to take the cows a long time to mess that up. So it's getting late in the day now, and the power has dropped off quite a bit. But check it out. Mixing all that concrete. I only came down to 78%. Still getting 21 watts. And uh, the sun's just about to set. So yeah, this thing pretty much kept up with me. And <laughs> man, mixing that by hand would have about killed me. So big thanks to Optivolt for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested, I'll leave links in the description. Let's get back to work. All right, let me show you what this thing's doing. Plug it in. And here's our brake controller. Which just acts like we didn't do anything. See, normally it would it would tell you you have a connection, and then when you push this, it would give you a number showing how much, you know, breakage, <laughs> how much it's sending to the uh, to the trailer. Here you go. I'm pushing the brake pedal. This thing isn't showing me anything. Oh yeah, and the stupid mount's broken. Forgot about that. Got a new bracket. Just getting that installed. Okay, so I've got the brake pedal pressed down, and uh, they're nice enough to show you here. This pin here is ground. This pin here is electric brakes. So I should have hot between the bottom two. Get that to stay up, but... Okay, so I've got nothing there. Now my problem is, if the brake controller doesn't see a trailer, I don't think it's sending anything. So I actually want to see, well, first of all, let's see if this is a ground. Ah. Problem may be the truck, because I don't even have continuity to ground here. Bad grounds cause all sorts of problems. Nothing. Huh. Okay. Okay, got it down to bare metal now. I should have continuity here, obviously. And I do. So now I can clamp onto that and I know I got a good ground. All right, so I have a wire attached to the trailer brake lead. And get on this ground here. There, there's the 0.9 volts that I was getting when I read it back there. Of course, that wire wants to go right in the way. Really? I just don't have a good ground on this bolt. There we go. 0.9 volts. So now I'm reaching the brake controller and I'm applying the brakes. It goes up to 8 volts. 
So the numbers may not be right. The voltage amount may not be right, but the controller is working. So I should say the positive side is working. Still don't have a ground. So let's see what we can find behind here. Yeah, I was trying to get this connector off the way it's oriented vertically. You can't see it. And feeling the back and pulling, I could not see what was going on here. So apparently this orange clip needs to come out. The orange frustration clip. Can't do without that. Huh? Sorry to say those connections look good. So now I want to see if the ground is passing through this okay. So I know the ground is that bottom left one. So I'll just do continuity to those pins and find out which one it is. Looks like it's pin 8 in there. Or pin 9. See, they're numbered 8. That's 8. That's 9. Both of those had continuity with our ground pin. Right there. And while I'm at it, I guess I'll check all the other pins and make sure everything's got continuity in here. Looks like seven is the trailer brakes. It's interesting, it starts at two for some reason, but two is right hand turn. Ooh, I see that positive there. Here's my, my power. It's like four is power. So I'm checking continuity with ground. Ooh, I have ground there. Wasn't that interesting? Because I didn't have it on the, uh, the other one. Let me plug it back in. Maybe I just had a bad connection. Yeah, it looks nice and clean. Yeah, I've got a ground there. Okay. I wonder if I have power there. Yes, I have power. Okay. Maybe it was just that needed to be reseated. I don't know. That's kind of weird. But uh, sometimes that's all it takes. Let's put our orange clip of frustration back in. I'm just going to confirm that I still have a good ground. I do. Plug the trailer back in and see if uh, the controller sees it now. Does not appear to. I look at my connector. I thought this was just a not needed uh, connection, but that's actually the connection to power. And I suspect that without that connection, the controller, eh, I don't know, I can't tell. And I've tried looking, so this is a nice app that's free called Maglite. And it'll allow you to really look up close. And looking down in there, kind of looks like a prong broke off there, but maybe not. I mean, why would it need power? It's got a ground, and it's sending voltage to trailer brakes. The power is coming through that. It doesn't need like a constant power to the trailer. It sends to the running lights, it sends to the turn signals. So I just thought that was an unnecessary prong and that's why it isn't on this trailer but i might be wrong maybe that's the problem i'm going to clean that up a little more and see if i can tell if something broke off in there or if that's the way it's supposed to be after inspecting this up close i determined this is just an empty slot constant power is actually not needed for this trailer i just took a needle file and cleaned up all the, the surfaces where the electrical connections are made so those should all be good now let's do this side and it makes the connections on the outside. This ground pin is the loosest one of the bunch. Makes me want to check and see if I still have continuity there with ground. Oh, still got a good ground there. Even when I push it all the way in. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be positional at all. Well, let's plug it in and see if cleaning things up made any difference. All right, let's see how our controller looks now. 
A. C, that means connection. It would say NC if it were for just briefly if there was no connection. So now it should give me a readout, it should give me a number. And yes, it is sending voltage to the brakes when I do that. So yeah, awesome. That is working. Funny when you're working on things, it's easy to second guess yourself. I mean, obviously I had some bad connections here. And I'm going to put some deox on those and this. But I had ground off part of the frame, had my meter on, and I did not have a ground right here. And I checked that very well. Um, so this was not the only problem. There was, there was a problem in this plug. And it's odd to me that just taking it out and plugging it back in fixed it, but it did. I didn't have a ground there. It seems like, oh no, it was probably just these, but I, I really don't think it was, uh, cause I was testing it uh, pretty well. You know, sometimes when you're testing with a meter and you're holding it against the bolt and it's like, oh, I don't have a ground. Well, it's actually that where you're holding it against the bolt is not a ground, but I definitely had grounds here and uh, I did not have one in the receptacle there. So I think I had two problems, but they're fixed. There's more to do though. All right. This is deox. This is basically just grease for electrical connections to prevent oxidation. So that should get some good deox on the spots where those need to meet and make good electrical contact. So this brake was definitely not working. This is the left rearmost. And uh, reason being, there's two wires that go to the electromagnet. Well, one of them right here is just broken. Almost looks like something chewed on it. Hard to say. Either way, I need to fix that. Just popping that out to give myself a little slack to work with. I'm in kind of an awkward position trying to do this. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Let's see if we can get this right. There, that's a good connection. Now, a little soldering flux for the folks across the pond. Seems there's always someone who gets upset when I say solder. Oh yeah, that's good. Now to cover that up, I'm going to use some liquid electrical tape. I'll let that set up and then we'll put another coat on it. I also found this and I'm um, not sure what did that. Looks a little chewed up, but it doesn't look like it damaged the copper. I think it just damaged the, the sheath. I'm going to check for continuity across it. Boy, it's hard to do. Well, isn't that interesting? I just lost continuity. So apparently this wire is broken. Somewhere, I think. Unless I didn't puncture it well. Missed on this one. That's what happened. Yeah, so I don't lose continuity anywhere along that. So I just need to. Uh, to cover that up. It's a pretty long area, so I'm going to use just some regular electrical tape. The benefit of the liquid tape is that it can't unwind. This stuff, eventually, the end is going to find, it'll become unstuck and start flapping, and then it just slowly unwinds itself, especially sitting back here in the wind, getting flopped around. So, once I get this taped up, I am going to put some liquid electrical tape over top of it to try to prevent that. And I'm also going to get these wires secured well so that they aren't flopping around. Just covering up where I punctured it too.
especially since I'm not greasing the back one the same way, I'm not going to really be able to pack those without removing the seal. I just don't see a, a need to totally clean this thing out. I was going to brake clean it, but why? Let's just get it packed back full of grease. Just kick it up. You see it squeezing through right there? That's how you know you've got it packed all the way. All right, and that bearing is ready. So I'm going around and just packing as much grease as I can behind this seal and into the bearing. And once I get a lot in that void, I can use the brush and really kind of push it into the bearing. And actually a fair amount's going in, so this should be just fine. All right, the rest of the wiring looks good, so we can put those hubs back on and, uh, and hopefully test this thing out and verify that everything's working. That went on too loose, I don't think it'll stay. You can already hear the, the brakes are rubbing in just one spot, so they might be adjusted pretty close already. You gotta take that plug off, and right back there is the scroll wheel. Pretty sure going down to up is tightening. Yeah, they definitely needed some adjustment. Ah, I just hit. So now it's locked. So I need to go back. I think that's good. A couple clicks back. All right, we're going to repeat that. So you want to spin it down and crank it down pretty tight. Now, I don't have specs on this. A lot of times you'll you'll tighten these to like on my dump truck it was 120 foot pounds and then you back off. What you're doing there is you're squeezing all the grease kind of out of the contact points of the bearing and getting it down to a a set position for the bearing. So yeah, here I can t I can feel that the bearing's tight. If you ran it like that, you'd ruin the bearing. But now it's set. So now I could back off. And then you can just do it finger tight. And that gives them a little bit of slack. So the bearing's not getting crushed, but it's um, it doesn't have play in it that's gonna also be a problem. See, that keeper just makes sure that that nut can't move. So, I actually think the brakes are rubbing just a hair on this one. I tried to adjust it a little bit before I put it on, and I think I overdid it by a tooth. So let me get under there and back that off. Yeah, that's better. 
All right, got the other side put back together too. Now, I don't have the tires yet, so those should be done tomorrow. I can test these out. I mean, these all roll freely. So I'm going to uh, go up to the truck and let's see if the brakes work. I'm gonna turn the brake controller all the way up and just use the seat to push the brake pedal. No brakes on that one. No brakes on that one. It's got a connection, but when I just push the brake pedal, it doesn't do that much to the trailer. It acts different when it's rolling down the road than it does sitting here, but uh, that's putting 11 volts to it, so that should be full blast brakes there. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, and it has to rotate just a little bit for that magnet to move the mechanism and lock it up. And it is locked up. Let's check the other side. Yep. I'm gonna take that clamp off. I feel a little snugger after that. But they still spin freely, so that's fine. They'll probably wear in a little bit. Maybe I should back off the adjustments just a hair so they're not dragging. I think I'll do that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to secure these wires better with some zip ties. And then we're ready for tires and the trailer's back in action. Well... $170 later, I got four new tires. They're nice tires. They're 12 ply made by Hercules. That's a fair price, but that always hurts. I need to put these tires on, but I'm feeling like a bicycle. You ever feel like a bicycle? Too tired. Sorry. Let's get these damn tires on. record I knew that was a bad idea from the beginning. <laughs> That was easier than expected. So there you go guys, lots of work on a trailer. You know, trailers aren't the most exciting things in the world, but if you're dealing with equipment, you're going to need a trailer. Keeping them running right and, and working properly is important, so got to do it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.